There was no time to waste for Ainsley and Southport to keep their finals hopes alive when the two sides met in Canberra. And it was former AFL star Jared Brennan who opened the scoring within 90 seconds. The Sharks had lost their previous five matches and made better use of forward 50 entries early, with further goals to Josh Hunt and Ben Hancock opening up a 13-point lead at quarter time. Luke Shreve edged his side further in front to start the second, and Sean Ellis finally got the tricolours on board at the four-minute mark after kicking five straight behinds to start the game. Although Ainsley added three goals of their own for the quarter, the Sharks found another seven, including coach Nathan Bock's first goal in his debut match for the club to head into half-time with a commanding 41-point lead. Ainsley made slight inroads in the third, cutting the margin to 30 when Michael Lawless kicked two in two minutes. Hancock bobbed up for another and Hunt added a further two goals to his tally to fend off Ainsley's fight back. Leading by 36 points heading into the final term, Brennan effectively put the result beyond doubt when he got within 13 seconds. Hunt finished with six for the game as the Sharks snapped a five-game losing streak with a 51-point victory. The Giants have been inflicting plenty of pain on the opposition of late and the trend continued when they came up against Gold Coast at Metricon Stadium on Saturday. In his second game back from a knee reconstruction, Jonathan Patton had the first goal of the game after two minutes. He had three by quarter time as the Giants kicked six straight to 2-6 for an 18-point lead. That inaccuracy came back to hurt the Suns as they dropped off in the middle quarters. Jared Pickett had three goals in the second as the margin blew out to 54 by half time. The dominance continued in the third as the Giants kept the Suns scoreless while adding seven goals of their own. Draft prospect Harry Himmelberg, who made his Neeful debut with Eastlake last week, pushed the margin beyond 100 nearing three quarter time. Ethan Reeves kicked the Suns first major since the first quarter at the 13 minute mark of the last. But with Patton up forward finishing with seven goals, the Giants still ran out the match well to win by 130 points. The match of the round saw second place Aspley host third place NT Thunder at Graham Road on Saturday afternoon. And if the two previous encounters this season were anything to go by, it was going to be another thrilling contest. Rising star nominee Nick Jackson opened the scoring with a 50 metre kick within the first minute. And it took until nearly halfway through the term for Eddie Sansbury to find the horn at second. And just standing tall there at the back was Sansbury. Was it a push? No. Yeah. The umpire says that's a fair mark. Although Aspley are off to a flying start, it allowed Darren Ewing to run into an open goal moments later. Goal and the NT Thunder get there first. Inaccuracy began to take its hold for Aspley when they booted seven consecutive behinds on either side of the quarter time break before defender Gavin Gross finally broke the drought to put them 25 points clear. Oh, off to Gross. Gross can run in with his left foot and yeah, kicks a goal. They, got they took a defender <laughs> to go down and kick a goal because the, the attacking players in the forward line couldn't quite get it on target. Ewing second on the stroke of half-time kept the visitors in touch, but they came out firing in the third to swing the momentum in their favour. Last week's Rising Star nominee Michael Hagen was first to strike, kick-starting a run of three in a row which drew the Territorians to within a point. So the young man, he draws first blood. Sansbury gave the Hornets some breathing space among a string of behinds, including seven from himself by three-quarter time. Sansbury kicks for goal, he likes it off yeah. the boot. With the match still in the balance, Julian Lockwood registered the first of the last, and Ewing drew scores level after five minutes. Hard. Nobody's there, and just taking the mark unopposed was Darren Ewing, so that's poor checking. Yeah. Clinton French made no mistake in front of goal to put his side back in front after 10 minutes, but Thunder kept coming. Cameron Eilert regained the lead approaching time on, where Ewing stole the show. He wheeled around from 50 metres for his fifth, and sealed a 17-point victory at the 25-minute mark when he was allowed to play on for the perfect finish. Comes out to meet it, right on forward 50, goes with this. the left, doesn't he'll have enough! He will, he'll kick it. That does! Unbelievable. Redland were out to celebrate midfielder Matt Thompson's club games record when the Bombers faced Sydney at Blacktown, but the Swans were keen to crash the party. 
Isaac Heaney was on the board early with a terrific snap from a stoppage and Delia Alia showed enormous talent with a goal from outside 50. The Swans were also taking big grabs at attack as they registered the first six goals of the game. Blake Grewer found some space to kick the Bombers opening goal at the 29 minute mark to give them some confidence heading into the second quarter. It was a more even contest after the break with the Swans edging clear before the Bombers made a late rally. Luke Rogerson was getting in on the action with three goals for the quarter as the Bombers made slight inroads to trail by 28 points. Heaney and Ben McGlynn combined to kick off the second half before Rogerson found his fourth to give them some hope. But the Swans were too strong in the last, stringing together four in a row to put the result beyond doubt as they finished 55 point winners. Blackdown also hosted the last match of the round on Sunday when Sydney University hosted last place Brisbane. It was an opportunity for the students to further entrench themselves in the top six, but the Lions were tough to shake in the opening term. The two sides went goal for goal until Ryan Brabazon and Monty Crockmore combined to push the margin out to 11 points at quarter time. As, oh, that is a gift for the students. Crockmore runs in, got the hand pass from a Lions player, kicks it through the goals. Winmar gave his side a lift early in the second. Two seasons ago, Wilson's there. Winmar flies, and Lewis Stevenson made it two in a row. Pass to Stevenson at centre half forward, puts the shot on goal from 50. Barton floating back, ushers it through. It's a goal to the students. Jordan Burke did his best to keep the Lions in touch, but two more goals from the students had Brisbane on the back foot at half time. Winmar up forward, he'll take this, and he's also got, I think it's O'Dwyer in the centre, and uh, well, the kick. It might turn out okay, and it's Brabazon rather, but I tell you what, Wimmar almost kicked her behind there. Lee Harding kicked his second approaching time on of the third, but the students broke the match open late. Let's turn a commit and then put the tackle on. However, Sydney Uni still winning the clearance. Dawson tried to get it. Couple of lines getting in each other's way. Thompson hand passes to Brabazon. He could run this in. Unselfish. Gets it away. And Rawlinson, they've kicked two goals in the space of 30 seconds. They kicked five consecutive goals to push the margin out to a match-winning 62 points at three-quarter time. Although the contest was effectively over, the last quarter belonged to Harding, who booted another four goals to finish with six of the Lions' eight, reducing the final margin to 43 points. Sydney Uni's win opens up a six-point gap from Redland on the ladder, with NT Thunder jumping into equal second with the Hornets. UWS continued to lead the competition with Sydney in fourth and Redland maintaining sixth by percentage only. To next week's games and the Bombers will host Eastlake and Brisbane, followed by Southport and Astley on the Gold Coast and Brisbane face the Giants in a curtain raiser at the Gabba. NT Thunder hosts the Swans in a blockbuster match at TIO Stadium, while Sydney Uni, Gold Coast and Ainsley have the bye. Keep up to date with all the news at nefield.com.au and by following us on social media, and download our app for live scores, stats, player bios and more.